Uh, I should have told the math students to, if there were any, to stay at the last one because I think I introduced everything that I need and um, it's not actually going to be uh, much more difficult. Um, okay, so uh, this talk is about a paper that I wrote my first paper a long time ago. Not that long, I'm not very. <laughs> So it's called uh, manifolds with odd order characteristic and higher order stability. Uh, let me first define. Okay, I will use that for this. Now. All right, let me first define uh, again uh, the order characteristic. So uh, for X, the finite field the complex. And find the order characteristic of X. To be, I can either define it as getting some uh, of the number of cells in the uh, uh, moon on, or I can take ultimately multiple the best numbers. Uh, these might not be the same individually, but if I have to the ultimate sum, they're the same. Uh, so this is also. Uh, this is just what the numbers are. They're the dimension, the rank of the absolute dimension. The dimension of the homology groups. The properties may be it. So, a little example. Here's S1. Again, I have a nice TW complex circle for S1. And I glue uh, an interval to a, to a point. Uh, so I have uh, one zero cell and one, one cell zero. Uh, and in fact, this is an instance of. Uh, As theorem zero, which says that all the manifolds zero. Um, why is this the case? Well, if I uh, if I take coefficients in uh, uh, several two. And all or all uh, manifolds of concurrent reality. Um, and if my manifold is all dimensional, that would mean that I have an even number of um, homology or cohomology uh, classes. And if there are like this, uh, and because I take an alternate sum, uh, they exactly cancel each other. <clears throat> um, so, uh, as I said before, we're the characteristic of uh, the genus G surface is two minus plus the genus. Uh, so, for example, I can take the same thing for any 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 sphere. I can always uh, uh, take an n cell. And then attach a whole boundary. So it gives me a very simple cell structure for a sphere, which is one uh, one cell and one dimension. Um, if I compare this to the other characters, you can go back to play. But as I, uh, I said in the last hour, I have a cell structure for RPN with one cell in every dimension. So uh, here at one minus one plus one is one. And that brings us to uh, theorem one, 
disparos. For n, the volume falls on the n. That's even for characteristic. The last dimension is. Unless n is multiple. Um, so we see that this is not the case for non orientable surfaces, um, but orientable surfaces have colloidal characteristics that's called even. Um, here's the proof. Uh, so, uh, by sort of a similar thing. Does that work? Yeah, that's good. We're breaking the fourth wall on that. <laughs> <laughs> Directly talking to the camera. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so, but by, by a, a, um, an argument similar as what I gave before, so over. So the, the, the parity, if I have an even measure manifold, that means that I have a middle cell. Okay. And um, my concrete duality is that I line them up like this, so that I, I'm left with a middle thing. Um, and then when I like, add these degrees, I see that the parity of my order characters is determined by the parity of the middle degree. Because all the other ones are like doubled. <clears throat> um, so I want to establish like so if I have uh, multiple of dimension four n plus two, I want to establish what the um, two n plus one dimensional. Um, the cohomology uh, group is they have the Q coefficients, so it's some sort of backward base. And then um, in order to have the cost product, goes up to the top dimension. Uh, so this is cute because my math is oriented uh, oriented and um, <clears throat> is it work or? yes no, it's okay so from great uh duality tells me that this is a non non non-degenerate pairing um and because this uh is an odd dimension this is a little bit anti-symmetric there's a couple that is uh great great symmetric uh, so that gives me a non-degenerate n symmetric theory, um, which is a syntactic form. I think a lot of people know it very well. That makes the middle dimensional class into a syntactic theory. Um, uh, and uh, therefore, the, the, the those have that even dimension. Um, okay, so now there's a uh, this, which is uh, much harder. So this was from my uh in two, right? This is often the long. It's just that spin manifolds, or so I should say, say what spin is. Maybe I'll write this down and say spin is. Spin manifold for a spin manifold on M. Um, you can fold some M 
can even get this even less. Because that is not all eight. Uh, so actually what they showed was that um, in dimensions, uh, maybe not the first so it's famous. Um, so before I had this if I have my hand on the end and then loop that's my no end then I just set this orientation is giving me lift to the SOM. Um, and then I have this white head tower of the ON. In the next stage, uh, so BL2, uh, this is also known as B spin. <coughs> and uh, so this is the two connected cover of the uh, ON. And um, giving a lift of this map is, is giving a spin structure. Um, so they actually show more than this that the oil characteristic is even. Then you, they show that the, the signature is divisible um, by 16. Um, for, for the method, 8m plus 4. Um, so, but whenever my my uh, uh, manifold is of dimension divisible by four, then so I, I just have this like the, the middle dimensional cohomology having this anti symmetric pairing. Now I have a symmetric pairing on the middle dimensional cohomology. This just gives, gives me a, the, 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 uh, the signature of this of this bilinear form, um, and I can sort of a number out of that just by taking I think the number of positive eigenvalues minus the number of negative eigenvalues. Um, and they showed that uh, 16 eigenvalues is the signature, which is this number. And in particular the like the number of, of, of positive and negative uh, eigenvalues gives you to the parity the dimension of the uh, of the cohomology. Um, so in particular whenever two divides the signature the order characters of even. Okay. There's something that I sort of noticed in the PhD student is that uh, there's this list of theorems, and it'd be cool if these are part of the list. So if A manifold is zero, zero orientable. Um, and orientable one orientable, or spin two orientable, uh, which is named green uh, zeros. Um, then here, like I, I have some sort of start of the sequence of theorems. Uh, but the question is how to generalize the theorems. Um, so here you have really big, right? Yeah, that's a bit of the level. Okay. Yeah. I'll just start here. Is, is this the like, readable now? Mm -hmm. so yeah, so like the, the three boards are good. Yeah. Can you explain one more how all dimensional means zero Um Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, uh, so my, any any manifold that's from greater reality always that not The Z two is a, is a field. Uh, so one way I could compute uh, ah, my okay. great uh, my order characteristic is by taking all tiny sum of 
the vengeance over it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. So here's the most common, I think, higher or instability uh, mission. And it's just uh, to you and the outside of the cover. So remember, uh, you said lower uh, multiple expansion and higher multiple groups being the same as those. Yeah. Um, so, so paralyzable is infinitely paralyzable. Yeah, okay. frameable is So for if I go to the column, what was your question? Frameable is infinitely paralyzable in this setting. Okay. Or paralyzable for L or not. Yeah, but this is not saying that it spits off an L frame. L paralyzable for you. Like, I do not, if, if I have an orientable thing, I do not have a section. Just... What, well, the section plot? Never mind. I, the, I think no. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> so, like, um, to that not, not all of my uh, connected covers are sort of different. That's because a lot of the, the multiple groups are zero. And then if I don't have a multiple group to kill, then it's sort of stabilized. So uh, what are your multiple groups? Well, it depends if you call them this. So that's a bit like, well, they're different for different n, but like sort of stable in the lower ranges. Um, and the multiple groups of this are well known. Uh, and they're attached to a tree even. Set to set to zero, set to zero, zero, zero. Oh, no, i This is not actually plot periodicity. So, this pattern that repeats more days. But if I want to fill with the. We actually have this recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so many views of it. I think it's recorded in many places. Okay. Yes, that's how we came up with it. <laughs> so the first stage, you know, it's BSO. And the second stage. As I just see, it will be thin. Uh, so uh, the next stage is called beat string n. And this is also, uh, so this is BO4, but it's also BO7 because I've now killed that one, that one, and that one. So I'm connected to here. Next one called. B5 brain. I think after that they don't have a name. And then the little except full zero, so it's the um, uh, trivial points or the track calls. Um, so if I if I have a lift to uh, so spin, then I'm called spinnable. If I have a lift to be string, I'm called stringable. If I have brainable. It, it comes from physics somehow. The string also comes from physics. So there are some interpretations of physics. Um, <clears throat> the, the thing is, though, that it's very difficult to know whether I'm stringable or fed for uh, For example, or it's definitely very difficult to find a frame of plantables. So it's like you know, all the way up. Uh, so, well, one thing I can. 
do to check whether M is operalizable is uh, I can check what happens in cohomology. So uh, M being operalizable definitely must imply that all the characteristic classes uh, which, um, up to now, a degree on. And indeed, well, as I said before, W1 is zero of this equivalent to be more useful. W2, one and two, zero equivalent to be more simple. Uh, but after this, uh, the characteristic that are incomplete obstructions to So, for example, um, W1, 2, 0, and uh, vertical contrary angle class, which is uh, an integral characteristic class uh, of VO and in dimension four. Uh, is that so? That, that gives me a class in my manifolds, and I know that like, if, if, I'm, if I'm spinnable, that class is always divisible, so I have some class P1 over 2, and that has to be 0. So that means that I can't, like, and I can check whether this class is 0, but I can't check it just on the basis of the characteristic class themselves, because like, this is half of a characteristic class. So. Um, <clears throat> and this, this is uh, equivalent to be stringable. Um, but there, there's no so so there, there's manifolds which all characteristic classes vanish uh, that that are not springable even if it's in all uh, different coefficients. Um, so what's what's the nice notion that I uh, define instead that it's easier to check? Um, and how can be the right one? So, the manifold is called pay orientable. Um, let's see how many classes. Um, I'll just speak. So, this is like equivalently. I can say, I'll just to the game as well. But I said to the case that it's K orientable and that fits exactly with the right one. Um, <laughs> So this this sort of generalized this idea of being orientable and spinnable in a different direction. Uh, and why uh, how does it relate to being operalizable? Well, naively, uh, you would say that if you're uh, two to the k minus one parallelizable, this would imply that you're k orientable. Um, but actually, it's easier than that. So, Stong in the C2 free paper um, shows that Steve Wood classes of the connected covers of the L will vanish exponentially in L. So that means that uh, if tau is a list. Uh, to the case non trivial cover BON. So they occur exactly when there's a non trivial multi group. So that's when uh, L is uh, 0, 1, 3, and 4 of A's. Then uh, MSK writable. 
Okay, so as every time I go up one step, I'm also one more uh, variant. <clears throat> um, so there also happens to be a nice demonstration of this power in a sense, sort of. Uh, so it's again. But, um, and the tower here um, faces or classify whether I am K or anything. It doesn't convert to like something that's contractible. In fact, uh, the lot of groups themselves don't change after this stage. Um, but I can, so the, the way I define this uh, B or K is um, well, I can take map. Uh, Gives me this 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 equivalent class. Um, and then I take on my own class. So that's uh, sort of inductively defines from one of these spaces. And then like uh, there's a little check to do that these classes are always non-zero. Um, so, and that's the true, so that all of these maps are, are non-zero every time, every time I get like a new space. <clears throat> Any questions? So uh, if I am this ordinary orientable, that's the same thing as the determinant of this bundle being trivial. I can take the determinant of a, of a vector bundle, right? And that's a line bundle. Uh -huh. It's like the top exterior power or something mm -hmm. like this. No, that's orientable. If we have an implication here as well, something like something is k orientable if and only if I have some kind of k bundle that I can cook up from your thing in a factorial way that is trivial. I haven't thought about this, but um, it'd be cool to think about it. Maybe we can talk about it later. No, because it's, it's, I think it ties with, so the words, L parallelizable, maybe that also confuses me a little bit. This doesn't mean that I like have L non trivial directions in there. No, no, that it's, I can it's, 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 it's just mean like the name for having a link to the L connection. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's make another table. So to track what? Maybe, maybe a question like similar to what this Thomas asked. Is it, but I mean, the liftability property in the paralyzable case, it is something like it is paralyzable over a certain piece of the skeleton, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think you can frame it like that. Like it has to be like, the trivial on the like a the reliable on the end skeleton, the L skeleton, yeah, like right. that's extended to the sure. response. Okay. Yeah. Or at least I don't know for speaking. Yeah. Graph is like the obstruction theory to spend yeah. two parallel to two extend your trivialization to the next cells, right. yeah. to the next uh, dimension of the scale. Right? Yeah. 
So you are like the taste case or then you have a go about going to start. Is that how the way you think about it? I think so, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But this is what the characteristic class meant, right? You saw that yeah. then the the ability thing is not the character I write the characteristic class. This is what you said right? yeah, yeah. yeah, but here, here like okay, so here we we define this as a multi fiber, but in the in the white power, we have that fiber that for the K. Uh, but for the unbroken K spaces. Um, okay. I think that's what's making the difference. But otherwise, like, the, the composite would affect the. Um, um, I'm not sure. Maybe not. Well, so, so like all the higher. The, now all the home entropy groups in low degrees are zero. So being like that map lifting to the thing means exactly that okay, if I look at the stop complex of M up to the degree. Up yeah, to the yeah, degree, yeah. 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 Contractible on the I mean, and then it seems now that if you have this sequence, right, this vibration sequence you said, right, then it's actually the obstruction is kind of uplifting to the next stage. It really is related to this Eilenberg McLean fiber you have. So that should be the obstruction yeah. class. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no obstruction. But yeah, so actually, we want to understand this better, like how the obstruction theory relates to like these, these uh, characteristic classes. And, like why if it that like in these orders does happen that they're the same. Right? But there, there's probably some easy easy part that they don't um, would be would be nice. Okay. Uh right, so this just to keep track of what's corresponding to or Uh, so this is all manifolds. So by, by the way, I haven't said in the beginning, but all manifolds are like smooth and connected. One oriental is there being oriental. Three oriental is spinnable. Three oriental is implied by strainable, but it's fairly weaker. Um, oriental is implied by strainable. Uh, and today orientable is more or less, more or less it have to be 2K parallelized. Um, and then we indeed can generalize this here. So, in your next one, And then, that even. I and this dimension is a multiple two digit form. <clears throat> um, so dimensions with uh, all type, uh, all is possible. It's two m, four m, eight m, fifteen m, three two m. And this is the one. Um, but I, I, in fact, show something stronger, which we'll come back to later, but it's like a number of two classes of energy. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, a nice question to ask right away is like, what are manifolds that realize uh, these odd order characteristics? And is, is my theorem all I could do? We're going to have a stronger theorem. So, what are the orientable manifolds with an odd order vector? The real projective uh, thing, uh, space of even dimension, that would one the complex. Perfect state that one vector fixed. 
two m plus one, right? Here we have like one cell so with the dimension, so they sort of cancel out. So it's either here or not. Um, now I have one cell in every second dimension, so they all add up. Um, similarly, the quaternionic spaces of even dimension, even quaternion dimension, uh, they have one cell in every fourth dimension. Um, so, as I said, for Newtonians, we can only form uh, open two, which is dimensioned uh, 16. But we can take uh, like Cartesian products of that with itself. So, the event was 16 to the power n. Um, and then here, we're sort of left with a hole, uh, which is why I was going to use that about in very long from before. So, uh, there's a new open question, which is, does, does this exist? Does there, is there a manifold uh, that fits into this table? Um, so there's a new open problem. Uh, is there a full orientable manifold? With all the So, particular, the four is implied by being vibratable. So, it's equivalent to so we want the eight being zero, and um, implied that being vibratable. Um, so, the VO eight lift is. But in particular, this would happen if uh, my manifold was eight connected. Um, so, uh, if, if the answer is no, uh, then in particular, this also implies the open because um, if I like, if I think back to these like. Uh, KP2 that I was trying that I was trying to construct uh, with some middle cell in a dimension like above eight, uh, then this this necessarily has to be uh, orientable. Um, so if 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 I if I show that this is this is like if one would show that this is uh, the answer to this is no, then then it implies that because it implies that no such manifold exists. Yeah. The, if no, then you have hope in variant one. If yes, you don't say anything about this. No. Okay. But we know that it's true. I mean, no in variant one. Hope in variant one is, is true, but it's like so. The, the thing is that it's um, it's it's so what I'm trying to say it's strictly stronger than hope in variant one, or at least like I mean. Um, it might be true, then, but it, it, like from the, 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 the it's a hard problem. From um, from um, so I, I look at this um, proof by Adams. It doesn't imply like that there's no four entity ones with all the other characteristic. Um, but did mention of M to B that we do all the yeah, it's great. Um, but this is only possible in dimensions uh, that are not all three. So I would find a compact at two dimensional manifold that is eight connected would be done. Is that, have, well, that has all the characters, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's what all the characters. Uh -huh. yeah. The trick. So mm -hmm. this You're wrong. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing the deal. <laughs> <laughs> A very example where the divisibility by two is below. I don't know of these four orientable manifolds. Divisibility by two of the orientable predictive. So, so you, you don't know if there's one with odd, but there are example where I don't know it's two or with low. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've, I always just thought about the parity. 
Um, no idea, yes, but there are examples which I'll, I'll give examples for it. So. Okay. Uh, because so uh, I'll but the reference book is like um, I'll tell you some uh, some attempts to solve this problem and um, and then I'll give you a proof of the problem. <clears throat> Which is a relation in the steampunk power. Uh, super fancy. Can, can I have one more question before yeah. we leave the board? So maybe I'm so seeing this list, maybe I'm wrong in what I think, but there's like some other theorem of talking about dividing the signature or, or something else. So if I take like this link you have and I start generalizing, let's say not the orientability, but the other characteristic or something else of you. I, think, I, think this, what? I mean, is it so like for pin manifolds or whatever you have that you only have given all your characteristic and less blah blah blah, or you have some sort of like well, maybe I'm so actually what I, maybe this is what you're going for there is like a high visibility to signature. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but the, the, well, what actually show with my proof is that the visibility is eight, not two. So I think slightly stronger than the than the order characteristics even. So there's a there's a yeah there, there's an open question there about like what the visibility actually is because like uh in the different dimensions. So for example string manifolds of dimensions uh, 16 things like that plus eight um have some visibility of the signature um it's like it's likely more than eight um or more than 16 if they maybe or maybe it's already 16. so yeah i guess some like some sort of this type of theorem but like for the visibility of signatures or something like that i don't know it's, yeah yeah so that there, there could be a theorem like that. i have i don't have it but no okay it, uh, it's an interesting research draft, i think maybe not something i would Dare to give to a PhD student. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably. I, I, I know someone in Mr. In the Mr. was thinking about these things and discussed it by him in the new conference. Might be welcome. If I look at RPMs and look at the Steve Whitney classes, there's also like a Leo Deskarpinski thing, right? Where like they're very often zero. In which dimension does that occur? No, like RP3 has a three old tangent bundle, but I think like you get arbitrary far. Right? I, okay, I maybe not for it. Okay. Yeah. Um so let's let's try to find uh interesting manifolds that could be a model for X. Okay. So Uh, first attempt. Uh, so there are manifolds that are called rational convective things. Okay. So definition: uh, a rational projective thing uh, is a smooth closed simply connected manifold that has um, the rational homology that looks like a projective thing. So rationally, the rational probability doesn't see that much, but uh, rationally, the, uh, com the, the manifold wants to be a projective thing. Um, in particular, since I could compute my order characteristic over any field, uh, these, these are order characteristic three. Okay. So these are nice candidates. So, Worked by uh, Kanner and Sue in uh, 2017, showed that rational uh, projective thing do exist. Uh, in dimensions 4, 8, 16, 32, skipping 64, and then I'm going on the egg. And then I'll just say some words. Uh, there's definitely no more. Well, there's there's no more until two to the 
power 13, except for potentially in 544, 1024, 2048, 4160, and 4352. Interesting. So this is all like based sort of numerology and uh, with the uh, um, polynomials. Um, however, uh, they also show that uh, normal thing are spin, uh, except for in uh, Mentions eight and sixteen, where HP two and OP two, so they, they're the heavy spin. Uh, so in particular, they're they're no 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 manifolds, but only two. Uh, no one is. Uh, oops, too bad. But it's a bit interesting that they, they exist anyway. Um, so here here's a, a new attempt. And I can look at, so a lot of quite interesting manifolds are uh, symmetric spaces. So it's always like a question like, where, where do you find your manifolds, right? Like, what, how, how do you construct interesting manifolds? And so symmetric spaces are uh, quotients of a, of a Lie group by a sub Lie group, Lie group. Uh, so in particular uh, manifolds. And uh, a lot of nice things can be constructed that way. For example, a different construction of uh, real projective things is by because O n plus one and dividing by O n one. Similarly, uh, C p n can be constructed as U n plus one over U n one. H p n is S p n plus one over the n to one. Um, well, OP2, in order they can't construct any higher ones, so they have to be constructed with uh, exceptional Lie group strings. And uh, so this is F4 over spin nine. <coughs> so, uh, Gretan gave a complete classification of the uh, of um, simple, uh, symmetric spaces that are quotients of um, simply mm, the inequality classification of simply connected compact symmetric spaces that are quotients of simple the objects. So you can sort of construct the rest out of them. Okay. Uh, and you know that there's uh, seven series. Well, there's actually no. So the series made out of like all of the uh, series of lead groups and the exceptional ones made out of the exceptional uh, groups. Um, So three uh, ones that are particularly interesting for us. Um, road and belt thing. So they did a lot of nice work of like somehow fitting all of these in like this thing called a logic square and um, and there's ways of fitting them all into, into constructions with red manions, uh, which I unfortunately don't know much about. Um, so the Roosevelt plane uh, have all other characteristics. Uh, there, there are three of the exceptional ones, and I, I think they might be the only three that's all the way not entirely sure anymore. So in, in the prevent classification, they're called E3, E6. Um, uh, and the eight. So um Rosenfeld's as far as I understand the history, 
he, he thought that he had a construction uh, from the vision of the press, which people later on thought were, was not completely right. So, but they're often referred to as uh, all tensors P P2, all tensor H P2, and all tensor all P2. So I, I, I believe that the octonians are not nicely behaved enough to actually construct some sort of potential product of densities of objective planes, but they're at least sort of they're trying to feed those spaces, uh, which is why they're interesting kind of thing. So the, these are portions of the exceptional legal in 2008. Uh, the dimension is 32, 64, and 58. Uh, there's also there's if people, anyone knows anything about the covariant variant one problem that's sort of like a higher level of the whole covariant one problem, and Tia thought that there was a link uh, between the Rosen optimism and the covariant variant one problem, uh, but nobody has actually found a link. Um, so what's known about these manifolds? Um, for the first one, we know all the info cohomology. Um, the second was about a, we know the CO2 cohomology is from Nakagawa. Um, and the third one, we don't know any, well, I mean, we know the rational cohomology, but uh, we don't know any integral or symmetric cohomology. Um, and this, I think this is one of two uh, exceptional symmetric spaces that are still like, unknown. Um, so, okay, so what's known in terms of our problem? Um, so, uh, the first uh, run of thing, two variants, so it's table, uh, and not three variants. So, this uh, is like, I did some calculations on this, but it turned out it was already in the literature. Uh, but you should know before that. So not in terms of film oriental, but what the sequel is. Um, and I worked a bit on the second word not play. So, all number eight. The two is going to have a. It's three orientable. Uh, and it's maybe three orientable. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, like uh, there's still some indeterminate uh, coefficients in the actual field number, and it depends on two unknown coefficients in square eight on two of generators in the big cohomology range. Uh, okay, so the status of the open form is that we still don't know, and we also don't know where these rows of things uh, play some sort of role. Sorry, the interpretation is that you maybe have an example for it. Sorry, I forgot your, I didn't write your list. So what was your list? Yeah. You mean you something for a three orientable knot? Uh, for three orientable, we know we have like the uh, uh, OP2. And <laughs> um, you know, so it's four orientable. It's the open problem is whether there's a four orientable manifold. So this, this, this second orientable thing might, um, um, might be an example where I think it it would be cool if we're, like yeah it would be cool if there's like some kind of structure to whether these rows of belt planes have some sort of orientability property. Um, I mean they're all they're all oriented, um, but 
but um, of course, like one can never know completely these exceptional legal they um, definitely like the common rings are quite. Uh, they have some symmetry, but they're not. They're not as simple as predicted. Yeah. Okay, so let me now uh, go into proving um, the theorem that carries the manifolds of an all body characteristic and that's a dimension of multiple two together. I still want to ask the question about this. So it may be for, for Rian wall, so you have some one problem because you're computing the steam rod, the action of the steam rod algebra or something like this on this commodity ring. And there's indeterminacy, but is that like a fundamental indeterminacy no, or were no, you no, doing no, it before? No, it's unknown. Okay. Uh, but it's also it's also me not. I mean, the, the, I was sort of basing the work on on um, based my calculations on the work by Nakagawa, and this is like a really long paper going through dimension by dimension in a like a sixty four dimensional manifold uh, to like determine like one by one what the cohomology uh, groups are. Okay. Um, and like in the problems of that, he determined a couple of steam operations. So like he does, he, he does yes, okay. he does. Um, but like I, mean, I had to like you know I it was mostly complicated by uh, the program to work out the Cartan formula uh, for large products um, and sort of that was through like all the travel like even use generators to see. Uh, what's but it's not something like you have an extension problem, something like this where you fundamentally don't know. No, no, and I, I, I actually I, I, like, uh, wasn't talking to Nanagawa and I asked him whether it would be possible to extend this computation. It's really complicated. Um, and um, was going to look at it at some point, but it's really busy. <laughs> and he, 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 was, he sort of replied, oh, that's very complicated paper of mine 10 years ago. They go, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's like an interesting uh, direct, but it's, it's very computational. There, there, there's some people in Japan that are like, very, uh, like, yeah, long computations in cohomology. Maybe can I ask another question? Um, so, like these properties, like all this care and ability. Is it easy to say, like, if I do a surgery of this and that type, it's preserved, or if I do some other type of surgeries, I can kind of try to see what um, you can do? Well, I mean, okay, so surgery are like a type of cortisone. Cortisone uh, preserves the Stephen Winnie numbers. Um, so, I mean, there's a relation to what the Stephen Winnie data are, right? Right, right. Uh, but, but it's sort of complicated because you need to, like, form a Stephen Winnie number by, like, uh, Multiplying and other super many classes together. Um, yeah. There will not be. No, what is it? What is it? Yeah, no, I think the class. Um, the class is not, is not no, known. Yeah, not clear. No, but I mean, you don't want the class no. to be preserved. Right? No. You want to do surgeries and try to think. Yeah. Oh, you mean it's yeah. in order to construct? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I think so. It's been a couple of years, but I, I did think I think about whether you could do this with. I, I thought I had found some obstruction to like actually doing this by hand, but I, I mean, I can't, I can't remember. Because um, it, it, it seems like it wouldn't immediately, because it wouldn't. We can also chat over here, so there's no way. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been working on it for like, years. So it's like time to take up all the things pretty cool. Okay. Great. Uh, so let, let me uh, let me go um, 
the, 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 the proof layer. So yeah, I think I mean um, it's a nice theorem, and, but but it's mostly an interesting like sort of pattern to absorb. Observe. Um, like, yeah, people said like, oh, this could have been noted in the sixties, but not being noticed. Um, but the, the proof is uh, showing that there's like. Um, um, a relation in the in the stimulus, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So the serum, uh, the oriental manifolds, and then that's uh, even what you guys have done us. And um, yeah. uh, so first, let me introduce something else that I could have, I guess, fit in the last hour, but I thought we'll keep it for now. Let me uh, move classes. Um, <clears throat> so if I have a map called uh, M. Uh, then uh, steam express would target the top cohomology can be represented by uh, coupling with the class uh, with the class. So uh, so square i is a is, uh, Operation from n minus in this case, like if I have so I'm going to the top uh, homology, and then it's it's a it's a sort of very easy argument um, using Parkway duality and the fact that I'm working over a field uh, that's like, since this is two, I can represent any homomorphism of of this cohomology class by uh, just copying with with the class. Uh, This has uh, about x, the square i of x, uh, and given by v i of x, where v i uh, is the i of cohomology. And this is the Wu class. Uh, and now Wu classes and the Wooden classes and the single squares, they will fit together in sort of a uh, two out of three relation. But if you don't do them, the other ones. Um, uh, so this, you can say that the uh, the total steep winning class, which is the sum of in all the breeze winning classes, is the total square of the total winning class. So, uh, particular w one c one w two is into plus uh, square down one, etc. So we, we can see that um, the the lowest not vanishing to win class is the same as the lowest not vanishing wool class. Um, so I could have phrased uh, the K oriental. But this is my and it's going to be oriental and it's equivalent to say that the whole class is better. Okay. Um, if I manifold this dimension to uh, M, um, then so I have uh, see one classes for all the dimensions of my manifolds. I have one classes for up to half because I can only take the square uh, maximally from the middle uh, class. Um, so the root relation says that uh, my uh, largest, my top dimensional the winning class is equal to square n v n, which is v n squares, and uh, Remember that's uh, so 
W to um, measure the parents of the order characteristic. So if this is zero, then the order characteristic is even. Um, and Vn measures something slightly stronger. So uh, like Vn squared could be zero, but Vn is still not zero. And uh, so if Vn is zero, then my signature is divisible by eight. <laughs> so for another burden there, which is the uh then M be a two dimensional manifold. Be k orientable. Um, and dimension isn't just any 2n. 2n is due to the k of 1 and that's due to the k. Um, then the end is zero. And in fact, uh, I showed more, which I'm not going to show now, but I showed as TL is zero. Um, for all L that's that are not available by two. <clears throat> Yeah, this there are or are not divided. So you said for all L there are not divided. Uh, yes, not. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's if it would be zero for uh one two k uh, two two k and five bits, yeah. then the my manifolds would be then the the uh, one more supporting class would be yes. Um, so no, no, that like um, the reason why theorem five implies theorem, the theorem is that. Uh, like every time that I go the, you know, one more k orientable step, uh, the k for one, I only check um, the dimensions for it that are uh, k even, but not k times one even, k plus one even. Uh, there is a relation still with all of that. And then it's follows uh, square n, which you remember the um, square plus the baby because n is this one. Is some is one is to k minus one where I'm um, divorced with eta n minus i. So this is um, some some of the composites of squares. So what I'm saying here is like for example. Um, if I have square four m plus two, uh, so this could be like super large, right? Like m could be super large, for example. Uh, then this could be written as square two, square four m plus square one, square four m, square one. I can I can decompose this very long square um, as 
uh, first I do square four m, and then I do uh, square two. Um, plus I do square one, very long square, and then again square one. Okay, so why does my plane imply the theorem? If M is here, right? Well, that's equivalent to new class is vanishing. Uh, so that means that my, my square, my, my square I would target the top homology finish uh, up to two to the k. So that means that like all of these little squares that I mean. So that means that um, square n, which is um, representing my bn, or represented by my plus bn, and then from the middle homology to the top one, will also finish. So, as I said before, the, the, the single square state of A to be a dense relation as an alpha branch, which is a, a relation for the way they compose. So square A composed with square B, the sum over C is zero to the floor of A, A over two of B minus C minus one, A minus two C. This is a binomial coefficient double number of these over Z of two. Square A plus B minus C, square C. Okay, so not, what does the number of HMP do? Uh, it composes two squares. And then it gives me output that has a big square first and then a small square second. So like we can both act from this side. So it, it first does the small squares and then does the big square. Um, so that's exactly the opposite of what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of um, rewrite this in relation and try to apply it in the opposite way. So first, Applied to A is 2 to the k minus 1, and B is 2 to the k m. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the C in zero term and put that on the left hand side. Um, so that's 2 to the k minus 1 square 2 to the k and now I, I so I got to choose what how how I uh, deal with my A and B. Uh, so it just it's just the term on the left that I got, but that's the, the one that I want to keep. That's a nice one. Um, and I composed it exactly in such a way that I had a small square on the left. Okay. And then I get uh, the rest of whatever was um, in my sum. That's from CS1. Square N minus C. Square C. Okay, so. Um, This is my the, the square that I want to uh, approximate. This is a happy term. This is a bad one. Uh, so here we have a, a, a big square on the left. So now I'm going to reapply 
uh, the same instruction, but only to this term. Um, again, we got a binomial in front, but now I have to see one there. Let's do two a minus one minus c square and minus c that I found there. Uh, sorry, um, what are you doing? You you started with the M relations. You chose an a and a b. You get some relation. You rewrote it. Okay, it's like that. Now you're not happy with the second term. Yeah. Okay, uh, but there are no a and b in there anymore. Sorry, what? the A and B are in like my discussion with the formula, but we are telling you what is then for with A and B and fine. Ah, and now you're lying. I'm, I'm, I'm taking, so what I want to do is I want like each one to be applied to the relation in, in the wrong way. Okay. Um, so I I chose my, my, my big square here mm -hmm. uh, that I want to approximate. Uh, that, that first I, I took the part on the left. Yeah. Um, and then I have some so remainder term. And then okay, I, I, only, yeah. I only care about what's on the left. So I don't care if there's like some square C here. Mm -hmm. I just want to sort of take this term um, and try to like uh, factor it again so that I have a, a, a big okay. square. Uh, uh, square. Mm -hmm. um, so they square into K. One minus C. Plus again the remainder of the thumb C is one to the two to the minus one minus C over that one over two or the whole thing over three. Um, maybe I I don't know I don't remember. Okay. Um. Floor that's and then I get a bit a big binomial. Okay, minus one. It's different. It's okay, one square n minus c minus c prime. Okay. So I've taken the little square, the, the, the square that was here, I've plugged it in again. Then a happy term, and again a happy term. Okay, but now I, I can just rewrite what C and C prime were. And I can reapply the same formula. These are all finite numbers, so this is going to remain. Okay. Um, one thing I haven't talked about is that I also need to check that these binomial coefficients are not zero. Um, and that's, that, that actually is uh, really nice because I, I haven't written down, but uh, I haven't uh, written out what it's called, uh, but exactly these ones are non-zero. It's quite difficult for binomials to be non-zero over them or two. Uh, so you have to take a binomial uh, expansion, match up all of the zeros and ones on the same diagonal, and then multiply all of them together and uh, Zero, 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 and zero, one, zero, um, and only, yeah, one. Those, those are those are supposed to be one. Okay. But you have to multiply all of them together. And none of them can be zero. Okay. Um, and uh, it turns out that exactly because here we're working with a large power of two minus n. Uh, my minus one in the top. There's like a lot of ones first, and then there's zero when we're under m. Uh, and this sort of the ones that are here are exactly beyond that. So uh, exactly these binomial coefficients are one for for such numbers. Um, right. So and uh, this this proves to be the same thing as we we've now uh, shown that like so here my my square in front here is smaller than the that I wanted to have first. Um, so I need I got a sort of composite where all the small squares here are in front, and that gives some factorization. Um, 
or decomposition of those this um, square n. Okay. Hey, I'm, 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 should I say questions or should I say questions? <laughs> Also, for the people at home. Yes, maybe uh, you can uh, see the questions from. Uh, Actually, I don't know. We hear audience. them. So, yeah, people at home, we don't hear you at all, or do we? But I mean, they, they can, can type on chat. They can type their questions in the chat if they would like to. Yeah, ask us. And you can put your phone on. Them. But then, right. Yeah, we, don't we don't hear that too. Oh, wait. Maybe they didn't. Right, so we hear ourselves. Okay. Well, if I mute that one, then I don't know. But are, are there any questions? Maybe if there's questions. Yeah, it now, be fine. Maybe I have a question while people at home decide if they have a question. <laughs> um, so I've never, like, I mean, I have no intuition for this is the universe square, but I mean, this is still comes from the universal. Object where everything lives, so yeah, yeah. I mean, no. uh, yeah, where do where where these objects live? Well, they, they sort of, in, in a sense, they come from the homology of RP infinity. Right. And, and then, are, is it true that these Wu classes, there's like some sort of, in RP infinity, there's a. There, no, so the, the, the Wu classes only exist for manifold. So they, they, they come oh. from uh, uh, from gradual. Okay. So okay. The, the, the Wu classes are like, like for um for manifolds you can represent it as uh, like homomorphisms uh example two, two um as coupling with the knot right. over essentially um but there's really no universal object that has there's no universal oh, that's pretty fun. okay um, well so i mean um yeah well there, there it's related to, to the, the squares i mean the squares are yeah. universal like, I mean, so and, and the squares they do live in the in our basic infinity. Yeah, it's it usually thought of as like an abstract object, like a small algebra. Um, but the, the the actual construction comes from like like factoring uh, product over R P infinity. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I once gave a talk about this, and I initially wanted to give this talk again, and then look at my notes and I realized it's just. <laughs> Incredibly involved. <laughs> so it's it's not very very likely. Um, but um, yeah, it, it comes from RP. Almost your RP. Maybe because I mean, so right. So to build our infinity, you're just you just keep attaching one cell in every dimension, right? So it seems like the cup. It's kind of it looks easy, you know. Like if you say, oh, it's just isn't it just? Yeah. I mean, the commodity is generated by. The little RPNs inside an RP. I mean, so 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 the the steam algebra can be completely characterized by. Uh, I, I just I think just just the attempt relations. So it's like you can think of it as an object that's like for the homologies of like a module. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So it's an abstract algebra. Yeah, it follows the buttons um, Like, yeah, but, but so, so, it, it, so it's it's coming from like a really uh, relation in this universal object, so this steam algebra. Um, but then it like sort of works out in a certain way for manifolds, particularly. No, I mean, I guess my question was something like geometrically, what are you doing in the universal object that you get these the, the other relations like this? But I don't know the question. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thanks, John. Um, so when why were you studying this? Uh, or what was the motivation of deciding to study these funny projective planes to find uh, sort of um, old Euler characteristic. I don't remember exactly the statement, but you were studying this sort of old tensor C, octonial tensor, or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, why think to study them? What was the motivation to start? Well, so it's quite, quite difficult to find like 
uh, the, like, the individual man manifold of dimension 32 or 64. Right? So this would have to be, uh, I mean, you have a sphere or something like but, um, but the, the, these are sort of like handed to you on a plate, like, look, these are very special manifolds, maybe they do something for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know of other like clear candidates for that you, um, like four interval manifolds with all the other characteristic dimension, multiple 32. Okay. So you can play the same game uh, with different coefficient systems. No, like, I mean, you have this thing of power, but then probably, I don't know, you're using somewhere that, I don't know, like a B O B O K has only two torsion or something like this. Do you get anything if you look at like other steamrolled algebras for manifolds um, in particular? Give you anything? I mean, I, I don't really know what, what like an equivalent, I mean, there might be interesting questions there, like what, um, like how, how homology operations, like whether there's some sort of interesting relation, but I don't really know what the equivalent statement would be, because the, the Wu classes uh, are like a subnultry thing, I don't know what it is, just in that thing. I mean, uh, over ZP, it's still yeah. a field, and if it's orientable, yeah, that, that's true. Stuff, huh? Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There, there could be like, oh, I don't know. When you were doing, when you were doing this thing, like, were you setting, like, were you studying this problem, or like? Were you playing around with steam without rally you got to the statement? Oh no, I, I, I literally like saw like the theorems that I mentioned before, like I saw this spin man. And, like I mean I, I was actually actually what, what I was doing, I was um I was calculating by one of the cores category for which you need the image of the order characteristic. Um and I was trying to do this for for string manifolds, and then I was like, hmm, is there as string manifold in dimension eight that has all the order characteristic or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then I sort of said this like, oh you know, I just told some people like, oh, oriental manifold that we can look at it. And and then and then they were like, huh? I didn't know that. Uh, so then I was like, well then I'll prove it. <laughs> Are there questions in the chat? Uh, no, but for, I just want to yeah, round of maybe questions. I would uh, suggest that the, I think it's been a long after for Anna, so maybe we let like, her rest a little bit and move to the bar, and then you can ask more questions. Does that sound acceptable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>